Today's podcast is brought to you by Douglas Plant Health. To unharness your soil's fertility and to maximize yield, consider Douglas Plant Health. Sometimes in life, you find yourself on the right side of the line. Do you think there's a little PTSD somewhere in there in the biathlon? I mean, you've got somebody <laughs> wore out to their wits end, and now you're going to hand them a rifle. <laughs> Is that really a good idea? I mean, I'd be like that one girl, Carrie Strug, and she made that jump with a broken ankle. I could do that. Live from Texas, this is the Dryline Farmer Podcast. You hear that? It's Brent and Landon, and this is the Dryline Farmer Podcast. As always, it is the Dryline Farmer Podcast. We are a day late and a dollar short. Landon, what do you think about that? Oh, I'd rather be a dollar short than short somewhere else. <laughs> well, aren't you uh, uh, confident I'm, in that area? Which I'm probably that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, aren't you kind of putting the cart before the horse or the balls before the dick <laughs> yeah. or one of the two? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you get the zipper all the way to the top? <laughs> yeah. How'd you get a bean? How'd you get the bean above the frank? <laughs> <laughs> Break that bean! <laughs> it always devolves into some kind of movie quoting over here. Well, we were going to record last night until my brother rudely called and needed a part for a sprinkler, so I had to bounce after Landon and I did a, uh, an hour's worth of non-productive gossiping. So I guess that's what you get, because we probably could have done the whole op- uh, episode by the time that that phone call came in. But, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things. You kind of get caught up in everything. But um, we are here tonight. We are doing some great things. We're really going to make the world a better place with this episode. I just know we are. Landon, we've got some. I noticed the early planters are already in the field and getting more seed Everybody's excited oh, wow. about this. What what so what is corn a hundred weight now? What does that equal to? I think we're we're closing in on fifteen bucks. We're like fourteen ninety one. Awesome. Which that that's old crop. That's not new crop. What's an oh, okay. So new crop. Yeah, new crop's probably not I mean it's not just a whole heck of a lot. Fourteen fifty maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well heck, even two thousand twenty three is getting pretty good. Yeah. I don't I'd, I'd probably be doing some of that. Yeah, I, I'd take that action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the game is, is she hot or not? not yeah. Would you do her? <laughs> yeah, would you? <laughs> oh, well, then <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, it's a, uh, man, if it weren't for high prices, it would be really gloomy around these parts. Cause no kidding. Man, we hadn't, well, we're not going to get into it. It's just dry and it continues to get drier. So yesterday I didn't really, uh, I didn't really investigate it. One of our buddies um, pointed it out. I guess the drought monitor center or whoever it is, Noah, put out a, like, um, they had the drought monitor map and then under it they had a little, I don't know if it was a how-to video or just literature or whatever on how to tell when you're in a drought. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> if you have to research if you're in a drought or not you ain't in a drought you are doing just fine if you have to be told it's kind of like if you're oppressed or you have to be told you're oppressed chances are you're doing all right you're not going to be you're not being (laughs) oppressed whatsoever we should just make a we should just do a podcast on on the list of the things you shouldn't do if you have to research if you're in a drought (laughs) i I like things you shouldn't uh, things you should if you have to research you probably are not in that situation yeah i'm gonna write that down right now you probably don't know how to put a car in reverse (laughs) yeah you probably shouldn't be uh, driving well it's like that malone's cones remember that webisode you saw it didn't you Uh -uh. where kevin uh, it's a short uh just a webisode on the uh it's like a 15 minute episode it's got kevin and oscar and and uh daryl's in it too but anyway so uh kevin's got uh, these gambling debts he's got to pay off and he goes to um he goes to the bank to uh basically fraudulently get a loan for an ice cream uh, store he's gonna start 
but he's <laughs> but he's only going to really get a ice cream cart. <laughs> anyway, nice. of course, the banker picks up on it pretty pretty quick that it's pretty fraudulent or whatever. And uh, anyway, he goes. So he question. Yeah, Kevin asks him. So when will I? When can I expect to have cash in hand? <laughs> and the banker goes. Oh, I don't think we'll have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like one of those things. So yeah, you'll have to check it out. It's pretty good. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a pretty solid episode. But um, anyway, so yeah. One of those things. If you have to ask, you know the answer. So yeah, but um. So anyway, but no. This week we're gonna. Um, there was a story that was released what or came out what earlier in the week about the uh, potential assassin of Ronald Reagan, uh, John Hinckley, which at some point in the past we talked about because I remember recalling that that guy was a Red Raider at one point. Did you rem- do you remember? Yeah, he was a Texas Tech. He's not an alum. He is a ex student, I guess you would say. Yeah. But um, I, I think he followed Jody Foster to BYU. I think. Oh, okay. That's why he he got he went so he went to the transfer portal and went to BYU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man. Well, so anyway, John Hinckley, if you'll look it up, he has got some new uh, tunes coming out. That he's going to release, and he's even going to have a. Um, He's even going to have like a concert. Is it New York or somewhere? I don't know if it's on like Pennsylvania Avenue in D.C. or not. You would think he'd still have a pretty solid restraining order against him. But anyway, he's got. I wonder a- if any of the critics will say if he killed or not. <laughs> I know. I was going to beat me to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, reviews are in, and he almost killed as good the first time as he did this time. <laughs> he gave, literally almost gave us a heart attack. But, um, yeah, so anyway, that inspired us to think about what other famous killers or would-be killers in the past, it, what kind of music would they bring out, what kind of songs maybe they would release to the public. So um, we're going to get into that. That's going to be the, the meaty part of this podcast. But I know uh, last week I talked about bringing in some um, homeless kittens and I named them Dead and Deader, and actually one of them did end up dying, which it was a pretty big long shot to begin with. But the lone survivor, she is a freaking tiger cub that she wants to drink milk like every, I don't know, 45 to 50 seconds. And uh, she will. She sounds like a, I don't know if it's a parakeet or like a something, but anyway, she chirps like hell. She gets fed. <sighs> Three times a day, and her name has been upgraded to Lily by the boys. So, it's a it's a it's a pretty good and promising life she's got. She still tries to nurse on our castrated male cat, but and he likes to lick her down for about thirty se- seconds until the cat starts trying to root around on his belly for something that ain't there. So, um, he he literally gets all fours and hurls him across the floor with his legs. It's pretty comical, but um. He doesn't get his feelings hurt since cats have no feelings. And Landon, you know, I had my ablation. What it's almost been a month ago now. Just, I don't think we talked about this. Just, we're gonna have a little guessing game. How much do you think they billed my insurance for that ablation? Um, twenty nine thousand. <clears throat> Keep going. Forty one thousand. <clears throat> Keep going. Eighty seven thousand. <clears throat> Keep going. 102,000? Eh, keep going. 212,000? Bum, bum, ba Sorry, you went over. <laughs> oh, they, they billed him $184,000. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would be that guy. I hate that guy. Or the, yeah. the only guy worse than that is the one guy that bids one dollar over the last guy. That's who I hate right. the most. But um, $184,000. But the bonus part of it is... Is they discounted the insurance a hundred and seventy three thousand dollars, so they on a on a quote unquote hundred eighty four thousand dollar procedure they paid eleven thousand dollars, so that is um that's pretty impressive in case anybody wants to know how the insurance uh, and uh, he, um, um personal health system works, it's uh it was pretty impressive yeah, so um, Landon I'm afraid you would not have made it to the um bonus round or no what is it the bonus uh what do they call it it's not the bonus round that's wheel of fortune um fi- showcase showdown there we go where price is right showcase showdown right Hundred eighty four thousand to stick stuff up 
in my veins through my legs and root around in my heart, which I guess is a pretty uh, pretty uh, legit procedure, but you know whatever so anyway and then i had since we're on medical stuff i had a uh, sleep study consultation and she's not a doctor but she did and this is kind of a topical to our conversation she did look like a um exonerated uh child killer now landon who can you think right off the bat who who, who is a famous exonerated child killer but she i'm sure she did it what was what was oh. her name? Oh crap! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know who you're talking about. But I can't think of her name. She looked just like Casey Anthony, and I am not shitting you, dude. And she and she she even had a mask on, and she looked like Casey Anthony. It's something about those eyes, dude. She might have, this this doctor or nurse practitioner must have had a little crazy in those eyes because, dude, I'm like. I like looked at her once. I'm like, I've seen that face before. <laughs> at least I've seen the top half of that face before. And I'm like, I think I've, are you, Hey, aren't you on TV? <laughs> I should have asked her that. Aren't you on, <laughs> weren't you on TV for like, like a month straight? <laughs> I watched your trial. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I know you anyway. Yeah. It was a, it's a sad situation, but I, I was, it was kind of, it was like, wasn't eerie. It was just really weird that and wouldn't it suck to look like to look like a murderer i know because you know she, i don't know she looked too much like the person to not have been well i don't know somebody like me would probably ask her did anybody ever tell you you look like casey anthony <laughs> no before she killed her kid or didn't kill her didn't kill her kid so i don't know anyway it's just one of those things it was a really interesting encounter but um that's really neither here nor there but Let's uh, let's get a move on. Before we get into our main subject today, we're going to give you another spot from Douglas Plant Health. Now, for many years, U.S. farmers in select markets have trusted SP1 as an integral part of their crops fertility program, as I know Landon has. Today, as fertilizer prices soar at Hereford Grain and supply chain challenges loom at Hereford Grain, DPH Biologicals is expanding access to this trusted biofertilizer, helping growers circumvent. Landon, do you know what circumvent means? I have a pretty good idea. But. <laughs> the circumvent of her aerial. Circumvent supply challenges while improving crop yield and availability, uh, profitability. With TerraTrove SP1 Classic, the complete biofertilizer, you can replace up to 50% of your starter fertilizer. Visit dphbio.com. All right, Landon. Uh, I'm going to let you. You got some notes there. You did write some notes down this time, didn't you? I did. All right. Yeah. Give me uh, who, who do you. I kind of tried to go chronologically, kind of go way back in the past. Who'd you start with? I started with the subway guy from just the other day. Oh, God. <laughs> and the name of the song is Can I Get a Ride? <laughs> Can I get a ride? Nobody <laughs> gets off in this town. How about that song? <laughs> yeah. Did you see? Did you see where Jesse Smollett wrote a wrote Juicy. a song? <laughs> Juicy, <laughs> Juicy Smollett, Juicy Smollett. Yeah, yeah. He, re- he released a song called "Thank You God." <laughs> oh my God, for real? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they God. had a Twitter had a funny meme of of like. It was like God saying, don't thank me for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's like that bit Dave Chappelle does. It's like, somebody, check on where Kanye West was last night. Because <laughs> he was probably helping Juicy's figure out that that uh, song there. Uh, yeah, uh, all any kind of train song would, or uh, train song would go good with that guy. And stuff. They didn't take him too long to, everybody was like, they got all these cameras and they can't find him. They found him in like, what, 18 hours or something. I mean, they found him because he called the police and told them where he was going to be. Oh, are you serious? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear they're that part. Credit, they're taking credit for it. They didn't do a damn thing. <laughs> Dang. That's <laughs> damn. That's like a Special Olympics hurdler getting credit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that governor or mayor or whatever is like, we got him. Yeah. Yeah, because he told you where he would be and you found him walking around. That's like the Taliban claiming the credit for a bombing. Except they know they can't get caught because they're in African Afghanistan. Right. This guy called. This guy's got to be ha- Which they said this guy was already on the FBI radar. Like they had yeah, already they only, interviewed him. 
And he'd only been arrested like a million times. So. Oh, is he a like parking tickets or? No, like violent crimes, <laughs> all kinds of shit. <laughs> this is a satirical podcast, Lynn. Try to keep and 12, up. And 12 <laughs> unpaid parking tickets. <laughs> okay, God <laughs> almighty. Keep up with the program a little bit here. Okay, see, I went a little further back, even though that was very topical. Brutus, you remember Brutus and uh, Julius Caesar? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I figured he'd just write a song called Caesar Salad or something. I don't know why. He'd write a song called You Better Beware of April Too, Bitch. <laughs> yeah. The Ides of March are on upon you. <laughs> Freaking the Texas Longhorn fight song working on the railroad all day long. Yeah. I was looking I was looking at my list and I was kind of, I don't know why I did it, but I had like a fictional and like a non-fictional part. Okay. And I was trying to come up with an idea for John Wilkes Booth and I, I actually <laughs> put him on the fictional side. It's weird. Yeah, he really existed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've read I've read a book on him. <laughs> I had one, the guy from No Country for Old Men, like the hitman. Uh-huh. He'd probably write a song called Two Sides to Every Coin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Friend. Call it Friendo. <laughs> Call it Friendo. <laughs> That's dangerous territory, Friendo. <laughs> my, my favorite person in that movie is that lady that runs the front desk at the hotel. Uh -huh. She's like, we can't give out no information. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like four seconds away from just like blowing Pop, her head off. Popping like, her. Yeah. Popping like, her with that stun gun. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give, giving her a freaking nail to the brain. Yeah. <laughs> she's sitting there staring him down. She's not budging an inch. <laughs> oh, hell no, dude. That, so I don't know. As a Texan, I don't know how to take that. Whether she was completely fearless or just that stupid. <laughs> I mean, well, we, don't, we can't give out that kind of information. We can't give out no information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't give out no information. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Oh, that is so good, yeah. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, fried neck bones and some home fries by Santana. <laughs> yeah. You want you want fries you with that? You want fries with that, yeah. I, just, I didn't put that one in there just because I hate that song so much and the guy that sings it. So, um, and I don't know, for OJ, I put just the two of us, <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> That's just because there's not the two, two of them anymore. It's just OJ now. So Just the two of you. It's just the two. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, John Hinckley, yeah. uh, one for the Gipper, of course. <laughs> well, I looked up his songs. He has one called We're Gonna See This Through. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, touche. Huh. I wonder how that one goes. Oh, God. I had one for Michael Myers, Home for the Night. <laughs> Home for the Night. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to come up with new songs. I don't know. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. No, um, yeah, let's see. Um, I keep getting text, but it's from the sprinkler, so I can't really text them back or anything. But, yeah, uh, let's see. Now, did you have one for John Wilkes Booth? I didn't, I didn't quite come up with one. I was trying to... Do something like. <laughs> uh, how like, about um? This isn't a song, but it. What about a uh, Panic at the Disco? <laughs> Even though they didn't, didn't have disco. I was discos, thinking like one, like maybe called Baby I Don't Play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think any serial killer could have uh the song Hit Me Baby one more time. That yeah. would probably. I mean, that would be really creepy if they had made a movie with that and that was playing in the background. I mean, it could. Be a comedy too, I guess. But every time he's making a swing, she, they could hit the line, "Hit me, baby!" One more time. And he's like, then they cut away to her music video or something. That'd yep. be a good one for Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, he needs like a phony fake one. Um. Yeah, it's uh, juicy. Just the, or the or the yeah, just the smoothie. You know, juicy smoothie. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy smoothie. Uh, let's see who else did some. Oh, wait. oh yeah, there was that one, but I couldn't use it. <laughs> it was just too bad. Uh, a guy that killed. Of course, nobody know who killed William McKinley. And um, <laughs> let's see, uh, Aaron Burr. Who did he duel? Uh, Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, there's got to be like Knives Out or something like that. Um, Man, that was one of the best Oreo commercials. Did you ever see that Oreo? Or it was a milk commercial. Okay. This guy's got a mouth. This guy's got a mouth full of cookies, and it's, he's listening to the radio station. And they're like, "Who shot Alexander Hamilton?" And he's like, calls in, and he can't. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, I think I remember. They can't understand him. He's like, "Amber, <laughs> Amber," <laughs> <laughs> like got milk. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that's pretty good. Or it's like Elaine with the Juji fruits. <laughs> yeah. What is Latin handkerchief? 
It's on my desk. The tank is on my desk. You forgot it. <laughs> I like Juji Fruit. <laughs> oh yeah, they had some pretty good. They had a pretty good fake uh, a name for a serial killer in Seinfeld, the Lopper. That was a pretty good episode. Yeah, uh, he was lopping heads off in Central Park or whatever. Who was the guy that? Who was the guy the baseball player killed? Pinkus, poor little Pinkus. Oh yeah. Um. Now he wasn't actually a real baseball player. Uh, right, 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 right. Not like Keith Hernandez. Um. What was his name? Um, Steve Gendison. God Almighty, I've seen that TV show too many times. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, you know who I am, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who who shot Jr. That's that's just Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say on, on uh, the wedding singer? He's like, "Holy shit! I think they just shot Jr. Or something." <laughs> I don't know. They shot him. Something happened. They they something happened to Jr. They shot him or something. <laughs> Isn't that guy? That guy was in like the uh, casino and Goodfellas, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was in one. Of he those, was yeah. was he like kind of like a Fredo or something? Um, yeah, he was like one of the goons, kind of in. I know he was in Goodfellas one. I'm pretty sure he was in. There was a lot of the same guys in Goodfellas at casino. Joe Pesci, De Niro. Well, Ray Liotta was just in Goodfellas. Uh, then that guy, well, hell, Samuel L. Jackson, nobody re- hardly realizes he was in Goodfellas. I mean, there was a whole bunch of stars in that damn thing. Uh, and he wasn't coming to America. Coming, who, Samuel L. Jackson was? Yeah. What was he? He comes in to, like, rob was, the whack on Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, <that's... laughs> awesome. He comes in and, like, drops the F word, like, 14 times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I like that commercial where, I don't know if it's a Capital One commercial. It's like, I don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they were interviewing him one day. Uh, I forgot who it was on my radio or something. Anyway, and he he still has that wallet from Pulp Fiction, the one really? that says "Bad Motherfucker." <laughs> That's awesome. What's uh, what's that? Dave Chappelle, Samuel Samuel O. Jackson beer <laughs> instead of Sam Adams. <laughs> oh oh yeah. Mmm <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Uh, yes, my beer. Oh God, that <laughs> haven't you seen my movies? <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk like that. Oh God, Good let's stuff. see. Yeah, um, let's see what else do we got? Some other John Wayne Gacy. I had, you know, he was this the clown killer. Um, I had I picked out fruit cakes by Jimmy Buffett for him. I figured that was pretty fitting <laughs> for fruit cakes. And um, yeah, so Bin Laden. Um, I got. <laughs> I don't know. They were all in the same area code, but hoes in different area codes, I guess, because he had all those freaking mistresses and concubines and everything. That would have been pretty legit. Yeah. Landon, what would be your, uh, if you were a serial killer, what song would you like play? What would be your ominous song? Or would it be like a like a eerie comical song? Like Cheeseburger in Paradise or something while you're, you know, axing somebody? Or would you go with the melancholy song? I don't know. I'd have to think on that for a little bit. What What about you? I don't know. I, I would think any... You know, they never play George Strait songs in scary movies. And I think, like, if while you're just, like, killing... Like, you, say you're a woman killer or something, you could just play All My Exes Live in Texas and just start going up to Abilene. And you could sing Amarillo by Morning, go whack a girl up there, and, you know. I and then... And then when you get convicted, you can sing the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Quick on the draw on that one, yeah. It's like, do you want to die? Check yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Tell me how much you want to live. Write this down. <laughs> oh, God. Then all you got to do is play like... um. Oh, Trace Atkins, and they'll just want to kill themselves. So, oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that's pretty. He, you don't hear much out of him anymore. I guess he cut his hair, and he kind of kind of quit. Of course, Blake Shelton cut his hair and got a little better, so that's always. Wasn't Trace Atkins on that show with that Empire show or whatever? Empire? I mean, it's like the, like the country one. Yellowstone? Like the, no, there's like uh, a show. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nashville. I think it's like that. I think it's that redheaded lady from Pure Country. Reba. Like she's like the manager. Oh no, no. I think Nashville's the show you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's Nashville. Could yeah. be. Yeah, it is. And yeah, so um, at least he's not on American Idol. 
but not that I watch it anyway. So yeah, but uh, no, those uh, those singers. I don't know um, if you're going for like because like Natural Born Killers, they had didn't they have like kind of funky funny songs during the like the murder scenes or something. Let's look up the soundtrack for uh, Natural Born I, Killers real quick. I never saw that whole movie. That movie is freaking weird though. Hell, it had a didn't it? Had, it had old um, Rodney Dangerfield in it. Yeah, he was even in it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he wasn't in it very much, but uh, let's do soundtrack. So, yeah, soundtrack. Here we go. Come on, you Slippery. stupid computer. Slippery Pete. Quiet. Slippery Pete? Yeah, I don't care for the name either. <laughs> soundtrack. I don't, I just need soundtrack. There we go. Waiting for a Miracle, Moon Over Green County, Sweet Jane. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Shit list. Oh wow, there's a rock and roll N word. Uh The Day the N Word too. Wow, they got some Sex is Violent. Wow. These are some pretty which I mean I guess it is Natural Born Killers. Okay, here's some songs from Natural Born Killers. Waiting for the Miracle, Leonard Cohen, never heard of him. Moon over Green County, Dan Z Dan Zane's never heard of him. Sweet Jane, Cowboy Junkies. I think I've heard of them. The Trembler. Route 666, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, that's probably... Oh, that's... um. I guess he sings it in the movie because he's in the movie. He's like the uh, the newsman. Back in Baby's Arms, Patsy Klein. Sex is Violent, Jane's Addiction. Nine Inch Nails, Drums a Go-Go. The Day the N-Words 2. Oh, Dr. Dre, so it's okay. <laughs> Batong, Batonga in Batongaville. By Budapest Philharmonic, Allah Mohammed, and Shar something by Nusrat Fada Ali Khan. What would you do? The Dog Pound. You probably listened to the Dog Pound. Shit, the Dog Pound. Shitless L Seven Rock and Roll N Word. Patty Smith Group. They don't sound very black. You belong to me, Bob Dylan. Burn Nine Inch Nails. So most of them are pretty dark. I would say songs. There's not any like. Dixie Chicks or Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift wasn't even born yet, I don't think. But um, <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Maybe I ought to, that maybe that would be it. Just playing Taylor Swift songs in your back in, in your murder scenes in your movie. That would be creepy. I think that would really be creepy. You Pretty know what else sweet. would be creepy, Landon? If you didn't use DPH, uh, let's go back to the reader here. We got to do it one more time. Because for many years, U.S. farmers in select markets have trusted SP1 as an integral part of their crop's fertility system. Today, as fertilizer prices soar and supply chain challenges loom, DPH Biologicals is expanding to access to the trusted biofertilizer, helping growers circumvent supply challenges while improving crop yields and profitability. With TerraTrove SP1 Classic, the complete biofertilizer, you can replace up to 50% of your starter fertilizer. Visit DPH bio.com now if they would let me make a ad for them i would and i could get the rights to the music i would be all over that man just put some get some fertilizer get some good fertilizer music going you know what's good fertilizer music? plant that seed or something something like that i don't know you know um where corn don't grow <laughs> maybe then we can play that one that they used to play that song all the time so anyway, yeah, Landon, did you ever come up with a song for your for your background music back uh, soundtrack? I don't have one, man. It'd probably be some instrumental instrument. So you'd have like the classical thing going on, or what? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the Trans Siberian like Orchestra, the, like the detective on uh, what's that movie? Uh, is it Res Reservoir Dog? No, see, I've never I seen Reservoir that. Dogs. Boondock Saints. Have you seen that one? Uh. -uh. Like the detective shows up to like solve a crime and he just puts headphones in and starts listening to classical music. Oh, he, just uh -huh. like, he just like figures it all out. Oh. So they came in over here and they did this. Yeah. It's um no yeah, and they play that in a lot of movies. I mean, there's a lot of those kind of big orchestral soundtracks they try to play while the big stuff's going or and that it's when they it's when they do everything in slow motion. That kind of good stuff. Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm. It's well, if you were a serial killer, what would your name be? Well, you can't self gloss yourself. You got they got the newspapers got to do that. But right. my preferred would be oh man, that's a good question. Depend it would depend on your weapon and your victims. So let's say 
you were out murdering like 77 year old far- retired farmers <laughs> with yeah, like it would probably be like a like a like an irrigation shovel yeah <laughs> i would say um i would i would force them at, i wouldn't shoot them with the gun i would force them at gunpoint to hold a drill with a two and a half inch hole saw on the end <laughs> and just make them hold on to the trigger till it beats them to death i think is what i would do so uh i would be the hole saw killer <laughs> Hole surgery. <laughs> hole saw. <laughs> I think they'd come up with a better name than that. <laughs> what about you? What would your name be? I don't know, man. It, it's these are tough. Well, you came up with it. I know. But... And and something bald. That's too easy. So we can't do that. That's too on the yeah. on the nose, can't, as it were. Can't can't go as the the four eyes four eyed bald guy. No. Um. Let's see. The slick back. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a redhead. You got a redhead something. The D bag killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting close. I think I think we're on to something. I think that's on the, that's in the that's in the short list. Yeah, the uh, the co op killer. How about that? That it's 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 um, what's that <laughs> yeah. bit fancy uh, literary word? Um, illiterate. The co op killer. Yeah. I think it'd I like be, that. Uh, it'd be something. It'd be something dividend related. <laughs> <laughs> The di- well, no, that would be part of the the like the um, movie trailer. <laughs> he split the dividends, but not in the way most were used to. Join us next Friday for the Co-op Killer, sponsored by Danny's Fins and Hens. <laughs> well, Landon, I think we're getting tired here. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Uh, no twit landon 44 and you can find me at trader brent on twitter and of course you can find this episode of the podcast everywhere where podcasts are found of course on the global ag network also be sure and check out our good friend casey seymour over there on the moving iron podcast he's got a great episode uh, podcast about all things ag equipment and maybe th- some things other equipment so yeah but until next time guys we're gonna get out of here Plant season is starting, so everybody stay safe out there, and we'll ask you, what side of the line are you on? The Dryline Farmer Podcast, a member of the Global Ag Network. There's podcasts, and then there's this, the Dryline Farmer Podcast.